Welcome everyone to Learning with Rev. In this video, we are going to be learning about max pooling layers. Often in convolutional neural networks, you will have pooling layers right after or shortly after a convolutional layer. You may have two convolutions and then a pooling layer, or pooling after every single convolution. In our previous video, we went over what convolutions look like, and now we are going to look at what these uh, pooling layers look like. So we're starting off with an image here, a 20 by 20 image. Uh, it's of the number one. Uh, we are doing a three by three kernel size of a convolution, and we end up with this right here. If you don't understand what's going on with this convolution and this kernel, uh, please watch my previous video, and I'll explain all that there. Next, what we're doing is we are doing a max pooling. So for every four or every two by two area, we are finding the max value and setting it to that point. So in this case here, we're saying two by two here. What is the max of that? In this case, it'd be zero. Um, in another case over here, if we look at this right here, uh, it's one, one, two, and two, and that results in a two. So the point of max pooling is to kind of blow up the image and to help extract the features from it. So as we looked at, saw in our last video, convolutions do blur out the images some. But with max pooling, you are kind of bringing those features back forward again. So you're really brightening up the image with max pooling, which is the most common. Sometimes you'll be doing average pooling. You're changing the equation. Uh, you're taking the average of the four values uh, instead of just the maximum value of it. Uh, another reason for max pooling is it actually shortens uh, your image size. So it reduces the dimension, not really dimensionality, but the size of it. So your network will move faster through the later layers. So convolution is very computationally heavy and it will, in this case, drop us from 20 to 19 uh, in each direction vertically, or to 18 vertically and horizontally. But pooling, not very computationally heavy, and it drops us for 18 by 18 to 17 by 17. And again, from 17 to 16. So as you can see here, these features are really blowing up. Uh, you would never, not really ever, have back-to-back -back max pooling layers, but it just kind of shows you how max pooling works in a vis very visual way. So if you have any comments, any questions, please leave them in the comment section. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it. And I hope you learned something today, and I'll see you next time.